Hey guys, welcome back. I want to say uh, thank you to our next guest. Uh, he's been uh, a crappie fisherman. He was the 2016 Bass Pro Shops Crappie Master Angler Team of the Year, five-time Crappie Masters winning father and son team. He won his first crappie tournament with his dad at eight years old. But he's now jumping, well, he jumped into it this year uh, with his first season on FLW. But next season, he will join the big boys on the National Professional Fishing League. I couldn't be happier to have with me on the show from Pleasant Hill, Missouri. Here he is, Kevin Rogers. Kevin, good morning. Thank you, Matt, by the way. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is I, I enjoy this. I, I nothing I love more than talking about fishing in general. So thanks uh, for having me. I uh, we talked a little bit beforehand, but we won't talk about anybody anything that we said. Tell me a little bit about this room you've got before we start. I see all the trophies. This the is it. This is um, you know this is my shop. We call it the shop. <laughs> it's an out outbuilding at my house, and I spend more time here than I do in the living room of my actual home. So, yeah. Uh, we're a we're a blended family, uh, wife and I. This is our you know multiple marriages. So we have seven kids between. The two. So this is the only place I can come where um, it's not chaotic. To be honest with you, so I have a big screen TV out here, a couch. I've got I've got an aluminum boat and my fiberglass bass cat out here, and all my fishing stuff. So this is my this is my man cave, I guess, if you would. I shot this is where i hang out and do a lot of fishing thinking which yeah. is important so I, I obviously i know how you got introduced into the outdoors but if you could tell us the story your dad obviously got you introduced into fishing how did that go yeah um early on i mean we did we just fish like most people we would uh, uh the, the fondest memories i had we had a lease where there were strip pits where um the peabody coal mine company oh. would Mine for coal here in Missouri, about an hour and a half south of us. And back in the 30s and 40s, before uh, uh, environmentalists took over, they would just leave the holes in the ground, right? And uh, they would the farmers would go in and dam them, and they it was called strip pit fishing, is what we called it. And they called they actually mined it for coal. That was my fishing. That's where I grew up fishing. Was on a strip pit out of a John boat with just an electric uh, electric trolling motor. No, we didn't even have uh, gas motors. That's how I learned to fish. Um, my grandparents, my parents, we would go camping there every other weekend all summer long and we would catch everything. You know, we were just fishing. We didn't care what we caught mm -hmm. and man, I still remember that. I still remember when I was six, my fondest memory was catching the six pound bass there. And that kind of hooked me right there. Um, also remember as a kid, the giant, my dad had the giant tackle box, the one that would open up yes. and had the layers. And I was so intrigued with the different type lures he had, you know, I um, remember him having a buzz bait for the first time. I'm like, what in the heck is this thing? And a single spin. We didn't, he didn't call them spinner baits back then for some reason. He had a single spin, a big Colorado, Colorado blade, um, a spinner bait, and just all the different lures. And I remember my grandfather, all he would use was a jig and the old pork rind. He was a jig and pig guy. Yeah. And that's intrigued me. It just, um, from there, the rest of my life, I just, I just kept, it just intrigued me and drew me to it. Uh, I loved bass fishing. It was my first love. Um, the year after I graduated high school, uh, back in the day before they had the elite series mm -hmm. on BASS, I went and fished the amateur side. I think it was called, um, the top 150. Yes. I actually fished as an amateur. I got to share the boat with some amazing people like Gary Klein, um, Kevin Van Dam, I drew, um, Lindell Martin Jr. was one of the guys I drew. Harold Allen was one of my favorites. If you knew who Harold Allen, he's a legend. I drew him at Lake Seminole <clears throat> and this whole time I was going to try to start this bass fishing career. And my father was a diehard crappie fisherman <clears throat> and he just kept begging me. I'd, I bought my first bass boat, um, right out of high school and he kept asking me to go fish these tournaments and i'm like i'm a bass guy that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go fish these bass tournaments. i'm gonna chase this dream the whole time i'm a carpenter here in kansas city missouri i live right outside of kansas city so i, I was a union carpenter doing commercial carpentry work <clears throat> and he kept begging me to go fish these crop turns and my wife said just go fish one with him you know hush him up hush up the old man so i went <laughs> and fished, fished the crappie tournament with him 
be freaking one the thing. Now, this is after uh, I fished him as a kid with him when I was eight and nine years old. This is when I was an adult, 19. We went and fished this first crappie tournament and we won it. And it it changed my idea of I've been chasing this bass stuff, you know, just finishing 30th, 40th. These guys were serious. What I had is I had one of the best crappie fishermen in the entire world and my father, and I didn't even know it. Yeah. So, we take off and we fish these things all over the country, um, chasing them. We've won five crappie tournaments in five different states. We've won over 30 crappie tournaments in our career. Um, I fished every tournament trail there is. And now he's up in, you know, his upper 70s and he's about done with this tournament stuff. I think he'll fish maybe one a year, which would be the Wally Marshall Crappie Expo. That's mm -hmm. be the only one to fish. Um, so he, this kind of came about last year. And when he did that, I started thinking, okay, now maybe I'm not too old. I'm not done yet. I can go chase this bass fishing uh, dream that I have. So that's what I've done. Um, I did fish a couple crappie terms this year without him. Uh, there was a classic at Sardis Lake, American Crappie Trail Classic. I took second by myself, but it just wasn't the same. It wasn't the same having mm -hmm. him not have a boat. So for the bass guys that don't know, all crappie tournaments are team tournaments. There's not a single man crappie tournament out there yet. So he's been my partner for 30 years. Um, we're still going to fish the, the one a year, but it's now time for me to go chase this bass fishing dream. And that's what I'm doing. So, so you started, you guys unbelievably successful, obviously having dad on the boat probably hell adds a lot of confidence too. I mean, I, I imagine at times that you probably want to beat each other's kick each other's butts too, at the same sure. time on there. I mean, but that's family, but you know what? That's what's funny. We've never had a fight in the boat. Not Shut one your time. mouth. Not one time. Shut up. Never. Which I'm not even on the phone with my dad. He's arguing with me right now. Not, we've, <laughs> this, we've argued about some things I've done in my life and bad decisions that kids make. Yeah. But never one time have we ever argued about fishing. It's unbelievable. It's the, it's the greatest partnership you could ever imagine in, as a tournament partner. I don't know why that is. We just, we think the same. We, uh, we're fishing along and we're not biting. I, I'm like, we need to move. I'll just grab a show motor. He sits down. He knows it's time to move. There's mm -hmm. no, I want to go here, but no, we should go there. It's never been like that. It's been amazing. So that's awesome. Uh, and he, he fishes, um, you know, he's slowing down. But when you're in your upper seventies, you're going to slow down. He sits down and he has an aluminum ranger now and he sits in the front of it. He sits down and fishes. We've our crappie fishing, which most guys don't understand for these 30 years was a run and gun as fast as we could possibly go throughout a tournament day. And that's how we were successful. Yeah. So, um, the live scope has come out the last year has changed all that. Our, our style of fishing has gone away. Now you're, you're individually picking off one fish at a time and it's really became a one man sport. So that helped make the decision for him to, to step away from crappie fishing as well. He doesn't need to sit there at 77 years old and watch me catch crappie. So uh, that, have you thought about doing any of the tournaments with any of your, I don't know what, how many boys and girls do you have in the, in the, in the clan? Yeah, the, well, the problem is they've been saturated with fishing their whole lives. You know, every time I'm a, they're around their uncles or their grandpa, all they hear is fishing, so they're not interested. Yeah. <laughs> they're saturated. I have four children, three of the four my, of my own children, three of the four have won crappie tournaments with us in the boat. So I've actually, I have th three children that have won crappie tournaments. So That's one of them was a cool event. Um, it was an event where you could have three people in a boat. If one of them was under 16 years old, and it was at Call Lake in Oklahoma, and my oldest son won uh, a regional event with my dad and I, so it was pretty cool. That's cool. So, so then the, this, I guess it would be this season. You decided to venture out and do what the the is? It, were you in the BFL or the Toyota series for FLW? Yeah, Toyota series this year. Um, and people people are blown away, and they're like, this. this in the world could you ever do this and something that doesn't change in fishing um the boat electronics um knowing the lake knowing how to read a lake knowing how to run the lake none of that scares me at all i can i'll, I'll go anywhere in the country put me on a lake and i feel like i can unlock the lake and know how to run it i mean that's half the battle right none of that scares me at all because that's just i've been doing it so long it's just it's just part of it um the techniques are completely different. Crappie and bass are not the same at all. Yeah. Never will be. 
going to be. So um, everybody was, well, dude, what do you enjoy more? Well, I actually enjoy catching bass. I always have. I've never stopped bass fishing in 30 years, right? I just didn't do it professionally like I did the crappie because of my father. So it's good. It's a huge learning curve. Um, uh, at my home lake at Truman Lake, that's easy because I know every single square inch of it. I just, I fished a, a little regional uh, tournament trail there and I got a paycheck at every one of them. That gave me the confidence to go do the FLW, but these guys are serious, right? These guys are, it. the competition is greater in bass fishing than it is crappie fishing. I can say that for sure. There's no doubt. Mm -hmm. There are more, not that is proper English, there's better bass fishermen in the world than there are crappie fishermen. Plain and simple. If you go crappie fishing, a national tournament trail, you're fishing against 30 guys that could win on any given day. You go fish even a Toyota series, every guy there could win the tournament on any given day. So it's a different, it's a, a different competition level for sure. Um, I'm confident in my ability. I just have to figure out how to catch 15 good bass in three days. And that's where I'm going to struggle a little bit because I can find fish. The thing about me is I don't have a network of people. I don't have all these bass guys seem like they have these little clicks and they all stay together and they all share information. I'm going out there with an open, open mind and I'm just going fishing and that's all I'm doing. Um, I think I could. Uh, used electronics a little more. I know how to read my Garmin electronics because of the crappie fishing probably better than any of them. I just need to figure out how to utilize it in this bass fishing. Well, in your first season finishing, what is it, 41st uh, in Angler of the Year points, I mean, isn't yeah. isn't really, that's pretty darn good, to be honest, especially, and I mean, no disrespect, because one of my very good friends is, you might know him, Eric Howard from H&H &H Rods and Reels. Uh I, I'm, I, I've had him on the show numerous times. He's a, a little wild, but, um, sure. but there's a drastic difference in crappie fishing and, and prof professional crappie fishing, professional bass fishing. When you started, when you started to, when you got into FLW and we'll get into the NPFL here in a second, what was the biggest thing that you noticed right off the bat? Was it uh, the clicks? Was it trying to find fish? What was it? me executing really <laughs> you know tournament fishing to me is a couple things it's uh location it's i think location is number one you can be the greatest tournament of all time you can be rick con kevin van dam jacob wheeler roland martin go on and on denny Brower. if you're in the wrong spot you're not gonna win that doesn't matter if you're cat fishing walleye fishing bass fish. if you're in the wrong spot a part of the lake um you're not going to win. So the hardest part for me is utilizing my practice days that I have um, and trying to find the spot where the winning fish will be. And I think that's for every species out there. And that's for every angler out there. Location is the number one key. If you don't find the right spot, you're in trouble. You're never going to win. Um, the crappie is a lot easier than that. Big crappie tend to live in one area of the lake mm -hmm. where mouth spotted bass and smallmouth live from the dam to the upper end of the lake and you have to figure out where they're biting and that for that low for that time of year you got a pattern of fish so um i think location is number one um timing right your timing's got to be right something i found in the in the bass fishing is um if you're throwing a buzz bait down in the back of pockets and the guy's in front of you doing the same thing you're kind of in trouble yeah or crappie fish Way you can come behind people, crappie fish, and they come behind you and still catch them. Bass fishing, a buzz bait's a buzz bait on top of the water, and you he catches them in his live one. You go behind him, you're not going to catch him. So, dealing with the um, the bass fishermen find the same pattern you that you have found has been a little uh, interesting to me. I have to learn how to overcome that for sure. So now this season, you're joining the first year of the NPFL, the National Professional Fishing League. Uh, was did you find, did you see that the MPL, MPFL offered something different from FLW? What was it that made you decide to go the MPFL route? Um, being a new tournament trail, um, I, you know, look at the, the Bassmasters League. But, uh, by the way, I'm the biggest bass fan in our world. I love every single thing about bass fishing i don't care what tournament trail is i have followed it i have loved it i have watched it i put a big screen tv out here in my shop so i could watch bass masters live uh before i go to a soccer game with my kid just so i mean i love it i am eight completely up with it and a lot of people don't know that 
because of the crappie side. Love it. Um, but if you look at the bass opens, it is, it is, it's stacked. Fast. <laughs> They're taking four guys out of 200 that get to go fish the elite series. I mean, what are, I mean, that's not very good odds, mm -hmm. right? Um, the Toyota series, um, pretty hard. You got all these guys out there that are trying to make their next step into, um, the tackle warehouse series it's difficult right it's difficult so this opportunity came up i saw that i could go to the top of this the the food chain in this organization i jumped all over it so i went all the way to the top now i have a lot to prove i have got a lot to prove i got to prove that i deserve to be there and there's a lot of people that are gonna you know talk on the brethren like, why the heck is this stinking crappie fisherman over here fishing the professional side because i believe that i am a professional fisherman the way i conduct myself the way i run my social media i understand the business side of it now i just have to prove that i have the fishing skills that and really the, having the confidence right with, with with just what you said is a big part of bass fishing having confidence sure. even though you might go someplace else and not be real confident when you get there however you practice your confidence always helps your fishing so absolutely that's yeah. that's a key. Now we we have you. I know you guys are going to Lake Eufaula to start off with. You ever been to Lake Eufaula? Never seen it. <laughs> I read every bass tournament result on Lake Eufaula for the last twenty years that I can find online. I have watched every YouTube video. Um, I've been on Google Earth. I will study Google Earth for the next, you know, what is it, three months, looking at this thing, and have a game plan in my mind of where I want to go and what I want to do when I get there. I can't wait. I'm excited. Um, I've already w woke up in the middle of the night twice thinking that I was on Ufala Lake in Alabama, believe it or not. So I'm, I'm that I, it will, it, it will be my main focus for the next three months trying to figure out and unlock this lake that I've never been to. I'm not, I probably, I'll probably have not been to any of these lakes that we're going to. So yeah, yeah I've never. Been to I'm looking forward. I, I talked to Brad over the, I think I talked to him over the weekend. Maybe it was Monday. I talked to him just through text, saying, "Oh, I thought I thought we were going to get. I thought the media was going to get the the list of lakes where you were going." But I think I think they're finding it a little bit tougher to schedule these tournaments now in COVID times than they they originally thought. So, I think I, it sounds like they're within a month of releasing the schedule. Is what it sounds like to me. So. How how has getting sponsorships for you in from moving from crappie to bass how how has that process worked for you i haven't um i haven't tried it really <laughs> so uh besides besides uh this this uh professional fishing career i actually own a construction company in kansas city a large construction company in kansas city so um it really been crazy because all the COVID pushed all these tournaments out to the very end of the year. And I've also trying to run this business with, you know, hundred plus employees that are all over the country. We build, we do healthcare work on uh, for uh, the Corps of Engineers on army and air force bases. So I got people scattered all over the United States. So it's along with all these kids, I have a lot of juggling balls in there at all times. So I haven't really tried to do um, the same sponsors that are sponsoring me in the, in the crappie side, just coming over to the bass. None of them seemed, actually loved it. Then none of them said, holy moly, that's the silliest thing ever. You're a crappie guy. We're going to remove your sponsorships. None of that happened at all. Um, so I haven't really sat down and tried to go get sponsors. I, I What I'd like to do is I'd like to go prove myself. I'd like to go out and show that I can compete with these guys um, in this new tournament trail before I actually go out and stick my neck out, to be honest with you. It, in all honesty... That's a really refreshing, honest way of doing things. I think that uh, nowadays there's too many people who uh, I just had Patrick Walters on, who talked about you know if if you're a new angler, don't worry about the sponsors, oh. uh, because it puts that finance. Well, it puts being in the tournament is a financial <laughs> strain on you as is. So, but if you can somehow have that cleared and just focus on fishing, is kind of it might be the right way to do things. That's me. Luckily for me, you know, I'm, I'm older now. I'm, I'm 48 years old. And without me, I'm my biggest sponsor. And I don't want to discredit any of the sponsors I have. I paid for all these tournament trails. Yeah. Me, Kevin Rodgers. 
they're all paid for. I paid for the whole entire year. And that's a big investment. We're talking about $30,000 I had to give up that should have went to my family that I just put into this Bass Tournament Trail. Now that's gone. That money's gone. I'll never think about it ever again. I will have a clear mind. Um, I can't imagine being a 22-year-old kid and putting up $30,000 to go fishing. I, I couldn't have done it. Mm -hmm. First of all, I wasn't sure enough. I was an idiot at 22 years old. I I'm still an idiot. And yeah, I, I feel ways sometimes too, but I can't imagine that burden and that stress these young kids have. I think they are more um, reliant upon these sponsors than someone like me, right? Um, I have a successful company that I've worked my butt off for 30 years to grow. And if I wouldn't have, if I didn't have them, I wouldn't be fishing this thing. So um, the the financial burden is gone. I just now have to, I just have to go fish, which is perfect. I'm in the right mindset. The one thing I do need to do, and I've started it and I'm going to push myself. I have to get in better physical shape. I, um, I'm 48 years old. Me too. And every, everyone knows <clears throat> standing on the front of the boat from sunlight to dark pre-fishing is not an easy task. Mm -hmm. 20 it's simple i could do it i didn't need any sleep now i need to stretch i need to get on the treadmill i need to start working out i need to lose about 20 pounds and i know that and that and i'm going to do that just for fishing to make myself a better angler and i'm i'm dedicated to it i've already done it this morning i do it every day until it's time to go that's one thing to get my physically i need to get in better shape mentally i will be there there's that that is even amazing uh, to, to even go that far. I mean, I've known Aaron Rodgers and all the all the big name elite guys for years. And I know I remember being at the classic in Tulsa and it was eight degrees outside. And I remember getting out of the meteor hotel room and seeing Aaron Martin's going for a five mile run. And I said to him, What the f shoot suitcase are you doing right now it's eight degrees outside he's like look if i don't stay in physical mental physical shape i can't sit on that boat i mean now look i mean god may may god help him and and keep him happy and, and healthy uh because aaron's a great dude but even now with all the problems that he's had and the the therapy he's had to do that being in that physical great shape has helped him now too so uh, yeah, that's something we, we, you know, when you're young, you don't, that you don't, you can stop at every truck stop on the way to you fall Alabama and eat horribly and it doesn't matter. But when you're 48, it matters. Everything hurts at 48. Everything. I mean, I, I was this year, I was, uh, fishing this classic down at Stars Lake and I set the hook and I had a nick in my braid and my braid the line broke during the tournament. I dropped to my knees and I smashed my hand on the fiberglass of my boat trying to grab my line, which I actually grabbed and hand lined in this crappie, but it cracked my hand. Well, that when you're 48, that never goes away now. I'm going to live with this crack in my hand the rest of my life. And young people don't understand what we're talking about. But the physical side, I have a lot of work to do. It's wintertime. It's going to be rough, but I'm doing it. I'm going to get, I'm going to lose 20, 25 pounds and be in the best physical shape I can be. So when it's time to go grind this thing, I am a grinder. That's how I've, uh, we won every tournament. I'm not afraid to run and gun, but I just need to. I need to get in a little bit better physical shape. Dude, you have like the best story. Honestly, uh, I, I, I mean, no offense to the to any of the guys on MPFL. I just in the ten or twelve years I've done, uh, I've done the radio show and done interviews and stuff. I just don't know a lot of you, but getting to know, I've, this is going to be my set. You're my second person with NPFL. I'm, I did one with Jeff Fitz like two weeks ago. Wonderful okay. dude. The two right. of you guys have like the best stories of all time when it comes down to it. And both have like this really great personality that hopefully the MPFL can, can focus in on and give you guys the attention that you deserve. I think that, I mean, that for me, why would I get in this? I mean, I'm, I have, you know, uh, uh, my line of, I have a line of fishing products that I was going to ask you about that for Jenko. Yeah. And only a small portion of the world knows that. And the, no one knows me, right? I'm going to be a, a semi famous fisherman out there, but not because of the bass world. You know, I've won over 30 professional events in five different States and no one's going to thing if I could do this right. And, um, and I can be successful. I think this thing could explode my career, even where I'm at now. I'm stagnant in the crappy world. It just isn't the same, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a better time for me to chase this dream. And the guys over there at the National Professional Fishing, they looked at this and were like, what is this guy? What do we do with this guy? They don't even understand. And I, they, they're like, oh, okay, we get it. There's a, 
Um, they'll never hear a complaint out of me. I'm not going to be a guy going, oh, my gosh, i got to drive 14. Nah, I'm not. No. You tell me where to fish. I will be there. Smile on. I will be. I will be a perfect student of the bass fishing game and a perfect, you know, uh, tournament angler. And I, I, that's, that's all I've done my whole career. So I can't wait. And it should explode um, uh, my career. And it's also going to help. I have a, a loyal following, you know, of, of crappie fishermen. It's going to help me bring those people over to the bass fishing world. It's so weird that there's this weird stigma of crappie guys don't like bass guys and blah. It's all fishing to me. Why is great- that? This big, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I've thought, I've talked about this on air for seven, eight, nine years. I've always I, wondered why the crappie and bass guys don't, they, it's like it's, it's oil and vinegar. I just reposted a picture, like, you know, your Facebook pops up. I had a picture of five years ago, me and Jacob Wheeler holding up some giant crappie together on a, uh, we were at a, a media event together for Bobby Garland, and Gene LaRue at the time. Both of us sponsored back then when, yeah. And Jacob loved crappie fishing. Just all he wanted to do is talk to me about crappie fishing. All I wanted to do is talk to him about bass fishing. And there's certain anglers that that get it. And a lot of bass guys crappie fish in the wintertime when those bass are lethargic and they're not biting. And and um, they just I don't know why that is. A lot of it's I think it's more on the crappie side than it is the bass side. To be I think so too. You. Yeah. There's more crappie guys. Like, oh, gross! Yeah. Bass fish, bitch pickles and all these. No, no that. Bass are—it's fishing. Probably, it's a lot more fun when you can unlock. The, they're harder, and I think crappie—they're a lot easier to catch than bass. There's no crappie are so easy to catch compared to largemouth bass. There's there's no about that. Well, let's talk about it briefly, and I'll let you go. You're part of the Jenko fishing team. You're a Jenko fishing professional, but you have a new line of baits, rods, hand ties, and jig heads. How did that come about? And tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so I was sponsored by Bobby Garland for 15 years. Nice. Um, I was with Bobby Garland before Gene LaRue actually owned him. So I came with the sell of the company. So Gene LaRue bought Bobby Garland, I'd say, 14 years ago. My name was actually in the sell. <laughs> so that happened. And then um, Ed Coth. Um, and not talking bad about Bobby Gurn. I just, I felt like when a massive corporation takes over a company, it's not for me. I know that sounds weird. Um, with Bobby girl and Gene Lear for all those years, I had the individual, I could talk directly to the owner, talk directly. And when the massive corporation buys this thing, it's just another tool in the tool belt. I thought it was time for me to go. I already had a relationship with Jinko fishing. Um, they let me design my own fishing pole. No questions. They didn't ask me any questions. I just, they kept sending me, I just designed this rod till, till, I, till they had it to where I wanted it. And it's like, you know, if you ever leave Bobby Garland, you're, we're all in with whatever products you want to make. And that someone gives you open range to go build whatever you want. You just, you jump all over it. So, mm-hmm. and I did, um, yeah, we have, um, we have my own lead heads. I have my own hand ties, hair jigs, which is taking over the crappie world again because of the live scope technology. I also have a plastic bait called an afterburner. Um, we have rods from 13 foot, uh, 11 foot and 10 foot. It's just, they're the greatest company I've ever worked with in the fishing industry. They just say, Hey, what do you want to build? Let's build it. And it, they, that doesn't happen very often. Yeah. So they also got to sponsor me on the bass side. They have a line of bass rods and that's what I'm going to be fishing with. Um, is their bass rods, their high roller series, which is an amazing rod. Um, so, um, just a great relationship. And I just, I love companies like that where I can help them and they can help me. And it's just, it's seamless. I like that in the fishing industry. That's awesome. Well, I wish you all the best of luck with the MPFL. I think you're with the attitude that you have and the, the drive that you have, I think you're going to do great. Uh, it's going to be fun to see how this, this whole MPFL lines up. You know, I mean, you're going to have your haters, just be ready, be prepared for it. Oh. They're go- I mean, oh, they're, Sure. I mean, they're not going to like a crappie guy being over here. These guys that have worked their butt off to try to get there. Um, it's going to be exciting with the Luke Duncan and the fat cat Newton. I can't wait to see their live streaming that they do in these tournaments. And there's a lot of guys in this tournament trail that actually need to be famous in the bass world that are not, I'm not putting myself in that category, but there's a lot of good fishermen in this thing that, that I would say the, the fishing world doesn't know that needs to know. And I think this is going to be a platform for a lot of anglers to, to grow and expand and, and people get to know them. 
Yeah, one question before I let you go. Are you going to try to fish? Are you just going to stick with NPFL? Or are you going to try to fish some opens? If if you had an opportunity to move to the elites, because I know I've taught, I've had Brad on. They were trying to to make the tournament schedule kind of go around the open. So if somebody did want to move into the elites, that they could. Or are you going to try to go try to do that? Or are you going to just you want to? I I want to make my mark on the NPFL and I want to bust their ass. And what what is your thoughts on that? I mean, I want to go prove myself in the National Professional Fishing League first. Um, I looked at the Toyota series, the Plains Division that fish, and it's not they're not going to line up. It looks like they're on top of each other. I was going to try to fish those those three again um, because they're close to, to home and the lakes I know like Gardnell and Grand and Lake of the Ozarks and things like that. Um, I have the open, the open schedule's not out yet. I haven't seen it anywhere I tried to find it. I don't know when it comes out. I think it should be coming out any moment, I hope. Um, I had planned on fishing in the opens. Um, I had made, I made a plan for myself to go fish two Toyota Series divisions and the opens before I was accepted into the National Professional Fishing League. So um, the main focus is uh, the National Professional Fishing. That's it. And whatever else I can squeeze in with all these kids and business and, and all this stuff I have, I will do. I would love to fish the opens. Um, but right now I'm going to give these guys, these guys took a chance on me and I'm going to give them everything I got. Yeah. Well, like I said, I think, I think you have the right personality, the right attitude, and it's going to be fun to watch to see how you do. And, and if there's, if you're in Florida and you need, need something, or if there's some way I can help you <clears throat> by all means, re- you have my phone number now. Uh, I think I'll, I'll text you my phone number. And, uh, and if there's something I can do to help you, please get, get with me. And for anyone that, uh, this is their dream and they want to chase it. I, I hope they would follow me along. I'm going to try to document every single bit of this journey, um, with the GoPros and the cameras that I have. Um, I'm not an expert at this video stuff, but I'm not, just, just so you can see what it takes to go do this. I'm going to, I'm going to document every single step from the, from the 14 hour drives to, um, trying to pre-fish. I'm going to document all this. I will have it on my uh, Facebook page. It's Kevin Rogers Fishing on Facebook and all my other social media platforms. I'm going to put this out there. You can see the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I've always been transparent. Um, everyone likes to hit, hold up big, giant fish on their social media, but I'm going to show the good, bad, and ugly in this thing and and me scratching my head. If one thing uh, I am, it's very honest and transparent. When I suck, I'll tell you, holy moly, I can't find my ass with both hands. But I'll <laughs> part two so hopefully you guys that, that are interested in this and maybe some young kids that want to do this you can see this old man do this and follow along and, and watch my journey so it, 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 i'm excited and i can't wait so is it going to be on your facebook page and you're going to do it on youtube too i think i'll start a youtube channel i've done the youtube i i had a massive following on youtube on on the bobby girl and I actually had a bobby girl in tv uh, for them for years which i had a massive following and and when i when I separated from those companies, I just been stagnant with the YouTube. I probably need to start it back up. Mm-hmm. YouTube's a funny world. It's just in social media these days. I hate the hater part of YouTube. I hate it. I can't right. stand it. Um, but you know, people just can't stand the, the negativity. I don't like negativity in my whole circle. And right. YouTube is full of negativity. But I need to do it. I need to document it and, and put it on there for. Well, if there's something I can help you with that, I do video editing too. So I'll help you in any way I can too. So uh, everyone go to Kevin Rogers fishing.com. Check him out on Facebook. Hopefully I'll have the YouTube channel up and running again here soon. And you can check out all those videos. Uh, make sure you say hello to him and check him out on NPFL. Cause I'm sure you'll see him on uh, their live feed. That's going to have 10 cameras uh, on Lake Eufaula. And we'll see the rest of the, the schedule here shortly. And, uh, I really appreciate the time and and look forward to seeing and talking to you more in the future. All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I'm going to say goodbye real fast, and then I'll say goodbye personally. So hang on a second.